Before we begin, two messages. What mobile platform do companies like eBay, NBC Universal, The Los Angeles Times, Razorfish, and PayPal use to build their cross-platform native applications? Titanium by Accelerator. They aren't alone. There are now over 25,000 apps deployed by Accelerator, which has been called the Rosetta Stone of app development. And you can start now for free. Just go to www.accelerator.com for more information. When my company needed to develop a key mobile product, one that I was counting on as a new source of revenue, I knew exactly who to turn to. Macadamian. They delivered on time with incredible attention to detail, and I was able to get product into customers' hands faster than I ever thought possible. I've personally known them for 10 years, and they do make great products even better. Check them out at www.macadamian.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is on Tether.tv, and I'm your host and founder, Rob Woodbridge. This is that place you come to as often as you can, and many of you come very often, and I really appreciate it, to hear about some of the latest technologies in the mobile space, the things and the entrepreneurs that are building as this industry is evolving. These are the path beaters, the innovators, and this is why it's so cool to do this, is that you get exposed to great companies and great technologies like we're going to talk about today. You know, it's been long called the idiot box, something that is sits in front of you, it's six feet away, sometimes closer, but it just makes you, I think the reason they call it an idiot box is because it makes you look like an idiot. I often spend time in there with my mouth wide open, just staring at a screen that flickers, And but the idiot box. But now, because of mobile and because of these interactive IP-based televisions, uh, you know, a number of announcements have come out over the last couple of months about um, big manufacturers getting into the space, and maybe even Apple. But because of the combination of these smart devices we carry with us, iPhones and iPads and the like, and these digitally enhanced IP-based televisions, they're becoming a little bit smarter. They're not your dad's idiot box. And one of the companies that is kind of pioneering this space is a company called Movil, based out of Atlanta. And with me today is Alan Queen, the CTO of this company. And I'm really excited about doing this because this is that frontier. I've often said that the distance between you and the television set is only six feet, but it's a huge deep well that is that six feet. So you've got to got to figure out how to broach that uh, that distance, and these guys are doing it. So Alan, I really appreciate you coming on and telling your story. Thanks for doing this, man. No, thank you, Rob. Glad glad to be here. Well, uh, you know, uh, television is a part of everyone's life. Anyways, and anybody in the developed world sits down and watches what is it like thirty seven hours a of television a day um, sure. just around that right um, and uh, certainly what has happened over the last little while is these these mobile devices and the internet have encroached on television's viewing time that one-on-one -on -one time that I spend with my TV has been reduced so uh, I'm really uh, you know I'm excited to talk about how you guys are bringing that interactive level back to the television set for the, well not back bringing interactivity to the TV for this first time. So why don't we just get a good overview of what Mobile is and uh, and let's move forward. Sure. Well, Mobile is essentially a early stage startup based out of Atlanta, and we're focused on developing applications and products around smart TVs, but we are doing them all in a way that can be controlled via mobile devices. So, cool. so all of our applications, yeah, all of our applications have the input um, is happening from mobile devices or tablets, and, you know, that's sort of where we see if, if smart TVs are going to be successful, we think that the smart, uh, you know, smartphones and tablets are going to play a big role in that to make that successful. So th there's been lots of stuff. I mean, you know, I've grown up, uh, you know, I'm in my early 40s. So, you know, I remember when uh, the first console games came out and, and, um, and I think it was, uh, you know, in television and a bunch of these other uh, games at the time were, um, you know, that have led into where we are today with console gaming. And, and uh, sure. But there's been a lot of attempts to, to make these TVs to jam functionality into these TVs um, where where it's not natural and natural fit, right? Yahoo had their right. TV widgets, and and Google uh, and, uh, and you know, and certainly Apple have tried to uh, you know add enhancements to these televisions. Why hasn't that stuff worked? Well, you know, all, all the attempts in the past have been more about trying to just slap a, a web browsing experience onto the TV or you know some some other type of things. And I think what really happened was. Obviously, broadband got faster and things like that, but honestly, the, the mental shift um, that I think Apple pioneered with the App Store really kind of made it approachable by people to say, I want to get a little small piece of functionality that's just one click away, 
you know, and I, I can package up all of this functionality that I do this one task and I put it into an app icon and I can have easy access to it. I think that has a lot of um, a weight to the way the smart TV is going as well. So, so now we have applications on our TV that do specific things. We have our Netflix application or Hulu or things like that. So I think that had a lot to do with the, the approach and the ease of use by the, by the consumer. Yeah, so not not kind of uh, not kind of jam things in there that don't make any sense. But is there is there a natural industry that that works best? Um, you know, is, is that gateway? Oh, I hate to use it, but it is. It's sure. like a gateway drug into this. That's right. Yeah, Netflix. I mean, uh, things like Netflix uh, to me are the gateway drug. Every every platform has that gateway drug, if you will. Um, and I think for smart TVs, it's things like Netflix. I mean, the first thing you're going to do with a smart TV is you're probably going to be watching movies online. Or you're going to be watching, you know, TV content, and then from there we can expand out in all kinds of different experiences beyond that. And, and so, you know, a lot of times, like especially when it came to the mobile devices, like that gateway was was games, right? Was that first piece of interactivity that really, uh, that you know, was a natural evolution. That I've got this thing in my hand, I got to kill a couple of minutes. Games was it, you know? It, That's right. Um, and uh, so beyond Netflix and beyond the, you know, the the things that we always are very comfortable with, which. Netflix is perfect for this because what do you do with the television set? I mean, you don't want to break a, a habit, right? Yeah, you don't. Yeah, that's that's what it's there for. Um, you know, the early uh, smartphones is the same thing. Is that uh, you know this is a phone, and you can't just take a phone and jam a bunch of games in there uh, and and make it feel natural. And then the iPhone came out, and and then and gaming became it, natural. Yeah. yeah, I think it also has to do with the fact that the TV, the function of the TV, I think, is changing in a way. Um, that, that makes this possible too. I mean, when I turn on my television, I, I go through a mental exercise, right? I'm, I'm going to watch cable TV, right? Or I'm going to play a game, right? Or maybe I'm going to watch a DVD or several other things. But if you think about it, those are all, to me, just applications, right? So uh, I see cable TV as an application. right? I mean, it's a very profitable and has a lot of content, you know, but it is one aspect of what I might do with my television. So you know, I'm going to watch TV, I'm going to play a game, I'm going to watch movies. You know, there's a lot of different things. And I think the smart TV is making that more approachable so you can actually approach it from that sort of option, you know, those types of options. Well, so I got to ask is that um, why hasn't this taken off yet? Or why why is it just now coming uh, to the forefront? Uh, you know, over the last year, we've seen much more about um, IP-based televisions. You know, Google's gotten in with a Google TV. Apple's getting in with their Apple TV. Rumors of Apple creating, uh, you know, right. a big screen. Why, why is it taking so long to take off? Well, I think it's several different things. Um, one is the fact that TV manufacturers are now getting into this internet, you know, connected TV. TV manufacturers aren't necessarily always the best at software. Right, they're best at making hardware. Right, so they each each of these manufacturers have their own sort of uh, apps platform and SDK for developers that you know now they're trying to create software. Then you have people like Google, who is like really good at software, getting into the TV market. Right, and so it's like this interesting clash. And the second part of that is the fact that you have cable. Right, everyone watches has a cable box connected to their TV. Yep. So what happens is is that the cable box knows exactly what you're watching. They know all, they are content aware, right? The smart TV gives you all this other functionality, but it has no idea what you're watching. It doesn't know about the content. So there's a big clash happening there. I mean, am I, which remote am I using? Am I, you know, to use my smart TV, I have to use my TV remote, but nobody uses their TV remote, right? They use their cable remote. Right. Right? So there's this big sort of disconnect between both worlds. You have all this power with the smart TV, but it doesn't really interact with what's on the television, you know, with, through the cable box. You have all this power in the cable box that doesn't really give you all the functionality of applications. So those two worlds kind of need to solve that and, and, and combine the two to make it easier for all of this to sort of take off, I think. And, and is that kind of a, that end point in a smart device, like a smartphone or an iPad or a tablet? Do you think that that's the interim, or is that the is is it uh, is that going going to be the go to device for this kind of uh, interactivity, rich interactive experience? Yeah, I, I think that whether it's an actual iPhone or Android device, or whether it's a special remote, you know, that's designed uh, by the TV manufacturer or someone else, as long as it is something that I can actually browse content and enter text, right, uh, things like that, it's not going to take off until that happens. I mean, try to enter text on your standard TV remote, yeah. right? 
<clears throat> so, you know, we've got to make it easier. We've got to make it more approachable. All the ways to connect these devices together has to be instantaneous. You know, I need to be able to fiddle with it in the dark. I mean, there's all kinds of things that need to happen for this to really kind of uh, take, take off. But I think, you know, once those two issues are solved, I think it'll really start to, to happen. Yeah, you know, I kind of look back over the last couple of years at the way, I mean, I've always had um, a PC attached to my, my TV, right? That's been my IP, right? Uh, my IP-based TV. So, uh, but yet, uh, what I require then is a keyboard and a mouse and, uh, you know, an HDMI cable in and a little bit of smarts to be able to do that. Um, right. And, uh, you know, I see that's that's from an engineering standpoint, right? Like, I've engineered this product. It's not a consumer-friendly product. That's right. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think that that's, you've got to tie that, you know, or you've got to, you got to uh, that tide has to come in a little bit more be before it becomes a, uh, a consumer-friendly piece. That's, uh, Netflix was, I think, the first real app that did that. But I look at what Google did with their Google TV, which was basically take a computer and a new operating system and sure. uh, I just and this massive remote that had you know a thousand buttons on it uh, as a as a termination point and and that wasn't user friendly and and that right. wasn't that wasn't that piece so uh, you know but the the experience though on the Google TV I really like though I mean it's yeah. the ability to you know Google has taken that step in saying okay we're going to provide you all this functionality but we're also going to be very content aware which I really like because. Not only do you have access to the applications, but when you do a search on Google TV, it searches across the internet, what's on TV now, what's on TV later, what's on your DVR, um, and it really is uh, content aware, which I think is a good step. Now, as far as the input device goes, yes, you're absolutely right. Sitting in your bed with a, with a keyboard, you know. Yeah, doesn't cut it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what's interesting is all the TV manufacturers and even Google TV has um, mobile device remote controls, right, that you can download with iOS or Android. But right now what they do is they literally just emulate uh, um, a traditional uh, remote. I mean, it has the up, down, left, right, enter, numbers, and all that kind of stuff. And then that's, that's nice, and that, that works. But I think for it to really be successful, it just needs to be an integrated experience. So if I'm searching, if I'm browsing through content, I do it on my phone, I select it, it plays on my TV. Um, so anyway, I don't get on a tangent there, but that's... Uh, but it's true. That's I mean, that's, I mean, Apple figured that out, right? Where you're, like, I'm watching a video on my iPhone or my iPad, and I just flip it through Apple TV to the screen, right? That right. Simple, trend, simple, simple pieces like that, UI like that. I mean, my kids now walk up to the television set. I've said this many times, and swipe the TV left and right, right. to change channels. Right. It doesn't work. Get fingerprints all over my television, but That's this right. is this is a natural UI extension to what we've been we've learned we've grown accustomed to on the smartphones. I'm surprised nobody's actually tried to do that. You know, create a TV that is touch capable. I know that's very expensive and. Nobody really is going to walk up to the TV in the end game and, and use it like that. Um, I don't think. I don't know. But uh, I, I, my kid does the same thing. Just yeah. touches the TV. You know, tries to interact with it, and it just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. And it's and uh, it's hard to explain why one is touch and the other one is not when the interface is is all natural. Um, but why is this? Why is this industry so important? I mean, there's got to be a um, there's got to be a big number at the end of this. Uh, sure. Why? 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 Why is TV so important? Well, one of the things is that, you know, how many TVs do you have in your home right now? Yeah. Well, right. everything's a TV for me right now, yeah. One so, on each floor at least, and then one, one I carry with me all the time? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, first of all, they're everywhere. Um, and the second of all is that they're social. Um, you know, a TV, a mobile device is your personal kind of view into the world, right? But your TV is really more about community and it's more social, multiple people watching it in the same room. Um, so, you know, I think that's the fact that they are everywhere and the fact that they are social, I think it has a lot of legs to that. Yeah. And that's actually what we're trying to do is bring, make the TV social again so that you, if you have four people sitting on, the, on the, uh, the couch, you know, that they can actually do something together. I mean, they're already sitting there watching TV and they're typing on their phone and they're talking on Facebook and doing everything else. So we're trying to say, hey, why not just use what, what's already happening in the living room and actually, you know, create an experience where everyone can actually, you know, pretend to uh, actually enjoy each other's company again yeah so. no kidding well I, that's right at least uh, you know at least you use your devices in a social engaged in a way right so that you're not just right. four people individually doing something you're contributing to something and there's some great examples on, on your website that, that that walk you through some of these applications that you've built as I guess demonstration uh, apps to uh, to be able to showcase this um, yeah you know another side of this too this um, that we talk about a lot uh, is the fact that TVs are not just in the home but they're also in public spaces right 
you know, um, we always talk about bars and restaurants and things like that. So imagine all those TVs, you know, becoming connected to the internet, and then people walk into the bar and they use their phone to connect to it and play games and interact, and then they can take that same experience back to the home in their living room and do the same thing. So that's another area that we're pretty interested in as well. How, how far away from you know from this are we? You know. They've talked about interactive television for quite a long time. I remember having this conversation. I was 12 years old. I was having a conversation with my father saying this. You know, Dad, there's going to be a point in time where I can watch any movie I want on demand whenever I want. And this is in 1982. And he looked at me and said, never, Rob. That'll never happen. And, you know, lo and behold, 20 years later, I can do that now. Maybe 30 years later, right? But um, how how soon does this happen? How soon does this really emerge as as a viable, viable, vibrant market? Well, you know, it's actually kind of happening, I, and people don't even realize it, I think. I mean, it's really hard to go out and buy a brand new TV today that it doesn't it. have, you know, internet-connected applications on them. Now, whether the people know that, you know, that's a completely different story. I mean, my mother bought a TV and had no idea it could even be connected to the internet. You know, so all the TV manufacturers are starting to put these in there, so that's, that's one part. Um, and then, of course, you know, making it completely dead, drop, easy, simple, you know. It's got a, the litmus test, right? Uh, I mean, an iPhone is a, is a great piece because I, I, I know that uh, my 72-year-old father can actually pick it up and use it, right? Uh, he might not be able to see it, right? But uh, right, right. at least he knows it, the intuitive screen, just like my five-year-old kids can use it in a second. And that's really where you've, you've got you to hit this with a television, that it's, it is that simple, right? I don't care if it's on AV or HD or blah, blah, blah. I just need to be able to engage with it in a way, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, I think I, my, my view is that you pick up your uh, smartphone or smart device, whatever it is, and, you know, you just start browsing through TV shows by images and searching and browsing categories, and then you select it and it plays, and then someone else is doing the same thing, um, you know, easily switching between uh, playing my Xbox versus playing, uh, you know, Netflix without all the fuss and muss of right. uh, HDMI inputs and all that kind of stuff needs to be solved, you know, so there's a lot of stuff that needs to be solved on the hardware side, and, you know, interoperability between all these devices as well for it to really take off. Now, do you think that the hardware manufacturers, it's always a question, right? Is that uh, like they know one thing, right? Right. And, and what they've focused on the last number of years is, is screen size and resolution per square inch and, and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, but do you think that they have the capacity, this, the, you know, the manufacturers today have the capacity to stop thinking like they are right now and start to think about, you know, that UI layer that really has to happen. Because I still have to hit, you know, a button to put it onto my computer, a button to put it on my game console, a button to put it on my, my Blu-ray player, and a button to hit cable, right? Uh, when, when does it get intuitive? Well, I hate to say this, but I think it's when Apple gets into the game. I mean, <laughs> yeah. They change I mean, it. Honestly, I mean, you know, they don't do that because they don't have to, right? Yeah. I mean, you, when you buy a, a cable subscription, you're limited to whoever is in your area, right? Yep. You don't really have a lot of choices. So whatever they give you is what they give you. And if it's a bad interface, it's a bad interface, you know? Yeah. And people may complain about having to scroll through thousands of channels, but they do it, right? So yep. as long as people are paying for it and it's a very, you know, low cost to put that out there, then they're not going to do that. But as soon as somebody comes in here and actually puts on a beautiful interface that's really easy to use, you know, not just cool for coolness sake, but actually is really, really simple and easy to use, suddenly people start using that, that's going to force everyone else to actually catch up. And we've seen that happen time and time again. Well, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm holding one of those things right up here, right? Yeah, this this right. forced people to rethink what it was, uh, you know, a phone was and a computer was, right? That's right. Uh, I, so you, you do think that it's it's when Apple or, or well, equivalent I mean, walks into that space? Yeah, I think it's when somebody comes up with an elegant way to, to make it truly simple and easy, you know, for people to, to use it from different devices or from the remote itself. Right. You know, somebody's going to come up with that and, and most likely to be somebody like an Apple. Like so. somebody outside of the TV industry that is yeah, looking at it so. through new eyes. It needs that. Yeah, I think it needs that. I think it needs people from, you know, different uh, areas to come in and kind of completely rethink that whole interface and the way that the way you interact with the TV. I mean, you know, to me it's also the fact that you know, they, they try to cram so much in these TVs, but really, at the end of the day, a TV is just a monitor. Right. It's you know, stupid. it's just a big <laughs> monitor, and it's you know, it has lots of inputs from different things, right? So, 
I always wish that my TV could literally have, you know, one HDMI input on it and that's it. Yeah. You know, because that's all I really use it for. Well, you know, I bring all my content from external areas. So. It's true. It's like it's something that is like I want my TV to be a little bit more intuitive, right? So that uh, it knows that uh, that I want to play a game because I've launched this app, or it knows that I want to watch a movie because in proximity I've launched this app. Um, sure. And it knows when I want to actually use it as a work monitor because uh, you know I've launched this, right? So. I'd love to see this. Starting, they're starting to get there. Some of the some of the TVs are starting to do that, especially when you turn on your Blu-ray player and suddenly it just switches the input because it's yeah. detected that signal. So th there's a lot of um, things in the HDMI spec that are really helping that. You know, being able to control external devices and things like that. So um, that's really great. And I think that they should continue on with the, that path. Well, so uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait. I mean, I think uh, from my perspective, it's about listen. Seamless technology. My kids can use it. I can use it. We, you know, I don't have to get the support call when I'm traveling from my wife saying, "Hey, you know, I can't launch right. a movie." And um, but also, I, I get rid of the wires and the things that are underneath the TV, right? Um, and let's just carry everything that with us or in the cloud. Most definitely. So who who uh, <laughs> who wins in this and who loses in this in this industry when you when you start to uh, you know put all the smarts on this? Sure. Um, and a little bit less reliance on, say, gaming consoles, right? When uh, the most popular game in the history of mankind is a game called Angry Birds. Um, right, right. right? It, it, there's a shift happening here. And when movies are being stored in the cloud and downloaded and everybody's getting to that game, um, who, who wins and loses? Who wins when we, when we bring the, de the power to the device and uh, the TV becomes just a, a screen, a projector? Well, the obvious answer is the consumer, right? I mean, they have all the choices, right? So I think that, you know, there's, be, there's always going to be a gap between really hardcore gamers and, yeah. you know, social, casual gamers, and there's, there's room for all of them. You know, but I think the, to make it easy as possible, the consumer wins completely. Now, the TV manufacturers may lose a little bit because maybe they're becoming more of just, a, like I said, a monitor at that point. Um, you know, maybe the mobile devices win a little more because there's going to be, you know, lots of interactivity between the TV, a lot of it happening in your hand uh, rather than clicking through a, through a menu on a, on a remote. So, but at the end of the day, yes, it's a consumer for sure. And, and is it like, um, you've kind of, I just wrote this down because it's very interesting to me. It's like, you know, there's a battle right now. There's this uh, um, smartphone battle going on between all these manufacturers and all these operating systems. And, uh, how is how is that going to play out? Do you think that you know there there are relationships that are going to be formed between like Samsung and Apple, or right. you know, are there going to be battle lines drawn here? And is it going to be a number of years before it actually I can use my Android device or my iPhone uh, on the same TV? I think that it's not going to be that long. But what's happening though is that since every TV manufacturer is trying to stake their claim in this space. They've all got their, their ways of doing things, their SDKs, and a lot of the technologies that you use to develop these apps feel very foreign to a developer that's used to doing web-based development or you know, mobile development and things yeah. like that. So, but there has been a little bit. I know that there's a uh, consortium between, I think, uh, um, LG and Philips, I think, and a, a couple others that are trying to standardize on ways to develop uh, smart TV, app, TV apps that can run on you build it once and run it on multiple platforms. Yeah, so that's going to have to happen too. I mean, obviously, there's still a big divide between things like iOS and Android. But you know, the th with the advent of things like HTML5 and people trying to standardize on WebKit, that same concept has to happen on the smart TV. Right. It is very difficult to create an app that you want to put on a Samsung and an LG and a Panasonic and, and a Google TV. So. You know, for Can you imagine the, the layers now? All of a sudden, it's like uh, iOS and Android, and multiple versions of Android. You got BlackBerry and and, and Nokia, and right. then you, uh, Symbian, and then you've got uh, uh, Windows Phone. And now, so those are just the base operating systems. And now you got to start to think about okay, so I want it to run on an LG TV or this kind of TV. That's right. I, I mean, from a developer's standpoint, it's like you know, forget it, forget it. I'm just going to go back to pen and paper. Right. Well, that's the that's the world we're living in. So yeah. you know, we've got our apps running on Google TV, Samsung TV. We've got iOS apps and Android apps that all work together. You can play somebody on a Samsung TV. You can play somebody on a Google TV. You can use it, you know, Android or e even on a computer as well. So um, it's a struggle for sure. We're trying to figure that out as well. It makes me long for the web days, right? Where it was like, oh, that's Netscape right. or IE, <sighs> right? That's it. And that right. was difficult. But this is this is much easier. So. Um, 
So game consoles, uh, you think that there's going to be an impact with that uh, for casual gamers when it comes to uh, being able to play games like this? Is that, do they win or lose in this? Uh, is it up or down for those guys? No, I do. I think uh, that the you know casual game market is perfect for the smart TV. I mean, you know, it doesn't require all the power of a full immersive 3D application to get a really fun experience happening. Yeah. You know, Angry Birds is a great example. Yeah. You know, even 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 simpler games um, that have been wildly successful, you know, could be easily translated to the TV. Now, you're not going to get you know you know full 3D you know you know Halo and things like that you know um, on your on your smart TV yet. But they're all scrambling to get together and try to come up with low-cost solutions to add, you know, hardware-accelerated 3D content. So I think it'll just keep pushing the Xboxes and the Playstations to go further down the hardcore path. And I think a lot of the casual stuff will start to move towards the smart TV. Yeah, it's like the uh, innovator's uh, dilemma, right? Which is, uh, you know, that lower that lower piece, which is the casual game, um, starts to uh, starts to, you know, be picked up by you know, mobile game companies that you sure. know, are building for these platforms. And then you're going to start to see that encroaching on the television sets. And, and the big consoles are going to say, okay, we're just going to move up market anyways because, uh, you know, the power, I mean, those devices now, uh, you know, an Xbox is a, uh, is, is a powerful PC ultimately. And it's actually a great smart TV device, I yeah. believe. I mean, you have, with the Xbox, you have your games, you have movies, you have casual games, you can download games. I mean, there's something really there. I know that a couple of cable manufacturers are putting their entire, uh, you know, cable box inside the Xbox, right? And I think... Uh, throw in Connect. Yeah, throw in uh, Microsoft Connect in there, and, and you've got the complete interactive, right. immersive environment, right? That's Not right. only for, for gaming, but for, you know, choosing what you want to watch and no remote Absolutely. control. Absolutely. And you don't get finger marks on your screens, right? <laughs> Still have the problem of entering text. Um, that could be done with voice, I, I assume. But uh. yeah, well, that's. I mean, that's what's interesting about uh, you know Siri and the 4S launch, uh, which is so. How far does that go? Is is this a communicator through Siri to the TV? You know, when you start to think about what the possibilities are, um, uh, maybe it's a little bit too far down the road, but. Uh, you know, I always like I look at companies and say, listen, you know, instead of an evolutionary step in television, which is what, uh, you know, Netflix is, right, which is sure. basically you're not getting your TV from your cable provider, you're getting it from another uh, from a cloud provider. But start to think outside of the box and where, you know, what the future looks for this thing, which is this screen that we've all looked at now for 60 years. Right. And right. Do, it, it, are we at the end of the line of that? And then are we beginning to see some, some classic, you know, real innovation coming in the television industry for the first time since TV was invented or since the flat screens came, I suppose? Uh, I, what, what is this? What, 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 what's out there for us? How do you see the future unfolding in this space? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we go back to the point of the, the TV itself being looked at more as the, as the monitor, first of all. You know, for just all types of input, I see it that um, you know things like Netflix and, and then cable TV existing on exactly the same plane, right? I mean, at the end of the day, people still just want to watch TV, so we're still going to be doing that, right? Uh, no matter what. But the the fact that we're going to now be not only um, more immersive by controlling it through our mobile devices, but it's going to be social. I think that uh, you're going to have multiple people doing things together. Right now, you have one remote control. You share it between the family. Now you don't we can share it. do something together. You don't share <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Don't Come share on. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's always next to you. So when you say social, um, you know, g give us some examples of, of the way you think, think that's going to play out or is playing so, out today. Well, I mean, we're, we're trying to, you know, push this concept through some of our applications. I mean, they're very simple ideas right now, but, you know, the idea is that you sit down, like well, one of our games is called We Draw, which is a Pictionary-style game, right? And you sit down with your family. You can have up to six people all sitting on the couch and all playing together, and everyone actually has uh, different views on their devices. So when we, when we call it a multi-screen application, it's, we call it, it's really more of a multi-view. So it's not just a companion. It actually has different views on different screens depending on what's happening in the, in the application. And I think that's the way it, it ought to be. I think that um, uh, a lot of apps will have a lot of benefit from that, you know, from being able to have something on the screen that's sort of the common area, but everyone gets a different view depending on what they're doing, whether it's playing a game or whether it's searching for content or things like that. So, And, and so this is happening now. And, and you know, is it... Um when when you go to market with something like this, uh, I mean, obviously receptive from the uh, TV manufacturers who are building these IP based um, sure. uh, devices. Uh, but what do you what do you when you show this at a conference or when you're showing this to a, a you know potential uh, um, customer? What what's their reaction when they see things like this? 
Uh, whenever we show this, we just see the light bulbs. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like, wow, never thought about it that way, and it's really great. Both, I actually more from a consumer side too. When we get people playing this, you know, we just we just watch their faces. They just absolutely love doing this together. It's just so much fun, you know. Because I'm actually, you know, the user's actually saying, I'm taking this device that's mine. You know, that's I I own it. You know, and now I'm communicating with everyone around me. And we're playing together, and I can come and go and things like that. So from both the consumer side as well as you know potential business partners and things, we always see sort of the light bulb go off. It's like, wow, I could do this with my content. Yeah. So it's been it's been pretty exciting. Hey, so uh, I, there's an obvious question at the end of all of this: is that as you're kind of building towards this, and you've you've uh, you know you've you've uh, convinced somebody that they need to implement this technology. Um, there's a developer component that's very important, obviously, in in, in, right. in in making sure that people understand that that there's a way to make money doing this. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, turmoil in the four years since uh, you know the iPhone came out and and app stores were invented ultimately um, around. You know, first it was a per, for pay app, and now they're free apps within app purchases, and and uh, you know nobody's making millions of dollars now at ninety nine cents a pop. So how, how do how does this turn into a, a you know an ecosystem that generates revenue for the developers? Well, all of the smart TV manufacturers have a platform that allow you to buy apps, you right. know, and download them. But we know that probably they will all become free at some point. Yeah. Uh, just, just like the mobile uh, side of things. Is. But, you know, one thing that's worked really well on television has been advertising, right? So we, we've come to expect that. You know, we may not like it, but, uh, you know, we expect it. And honestly, we get a lot of our information that way. Um, now, on mobile, it's usually a little tiny banner, you know, that you can actually click on or something yeah. like that, or online or things like that. They're kind of annoying, you know. But on TV, you kind of expect it. Plus, you have the benefit of the full, you know, full screen, you know, 30-second ad. So the way we kind of see it and something we're trying to do is uh, multi, multi-screen multi synchronized advertising so that if you have a really nice uh, video on the TV, at the synchronized at the same time, you get the call to action uh, information on, on the mobile device and you can do some interesting things there not only do you just have a simple click to get more info but maybe it becomes a, a simple game that you can play you know something you can actually interact with so we think there's an interesting uh, twist we haven't proven that yet but we think there's uh, something to that and uh, you know a lot of the smart TV manufacturers are starting to come out with their own ad platforms as well to make that happen now another part of that is that um, with if you're using the mobile device to control the TV app don't forget that the mobile device is also uh, a credit card. I mean, it also has uh, in-app purchasing and other types of things that can go along with it as well. So you could be working with a television app and ask you to pay for a new level in a game or something like that, but you actually do the payment on the mobile device. Right. So that's one of the reasons I really think that if this is going to happen, it's going to need that mobile device um, to be part of that ecosphere. Yeah, and do you think that, uh, you know, and this is maybe beyond our, our discussion here, but there's a, there's an ecosystem play here because the car the carriers I call them carriers because I'm up in Canada and Rogers uh, is is, a, is yeah. a carrier as well as a cable provider, um, but they own me, right? right. The TV doesn't right. own me, right? So Rogers is like if you want to watch that baseball game, it's you know three hundred forty nine dollars a year and you get MLB packages or or the football channels. Or HD or the hockey. How, how do you think that they're going to? Uh, do you think that they're going to open this up and say, "Listen, now it's the TV manufacturers that are getting into this game, right? They've got an OS, an App Store. Uh, pretty soon, that you know, uh, you know, Hulu or Netflix are going to be on these things everywhere, and uh, it's going to start to eat, and it is eating uh, revenue, sure. regardless of what people are talking about. You know, with Netflix and this, you know, fumble that they've done. I mean, they still have multi million, twenty three million subscribers and growing. Um, how do you think those guys, the cable providers, are going to react to this? Um, well, we're seeing a lot of different and interesting ways that they're trying to combat this. One is uh, things like TV Everywhere and that initiative where yeah. you can actually watch over-the-top content. Another one, so that forces you to still have your cable you know, subscription. Um, and then... You know, we, we've seen some other ones where they're starting to get into offering applications themselves. Right. You know, so they're off actually offering and then trying to get some money out of that side of things, too. So there's going to be interesting things to happen out of there. They're not hurting at all right now. But, you know, as we know, there's more and more people are, are starting to cut that cord, right? Um, so they're going to have to figure out other ways. I personally believe that, you know, the cable manufacturers have at their disposal the best pipe for bandwidth um, in the world. You know, so I think they should really take a look at using that for bringing what they call now over the top content through that cable, through that pipe. I mean, you stream a, that's one problem too. You stream your Netflix over uh, your internet, 
and you know you may get some buffering issues here and there but usually when you do a pay-per-view movie through your cable system there's usually no problems and that's one of the things they have just a great you know connection there that they should really take advantage of and let that be a little more open um, so I don't know there's lots of different ways to look at that I think that they own the user like you said right now um, I think eventually we might see things like you know aggregating content like a cable provider but more for over the top you know yep. where I'm paying one price um, I personally would love to just pay for what I watch, but um, you know, it's never gonna another, I, I don't know about that. So yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely trying a few things. I know I know that like Comcast, maybe it's uh, UVerse is trying to do things like a much sleeker UI, offer applications directly on the cable box um, yeah. rather than doing it on the smart TV. Yeah, it, you know, I think that this is this is that next battle. This is the this is the living room dashboard that we're talking about because it it is sure. the focal point of every of most North American living rooms is television. That's set. right. And you know, in in Canada, the Rogers uh, is the cable provider, pretty much the dominant cable prov provider across Canada. Has now uh, also a carrier, so we get all our s cell phones, and they bundle it all together. But they've also just applied uh, to be a chartered bank. So when you start to think oh, about uh, you know alternative sources of revenue, they don't care if you're they do, but cable's a big business for them. But you know, they if, if they're going to lose revenue on the cable side because of cord cutting then anything that you buy through your phone is now going to be uh, you know, levied or a transaction against them. So yeah. I think that they're hedging. They look at this and say, that dumb box, you know, we've been feeding it for a long time, but at some point it's going to get too smart for us and there's going to be ways to circumvent that. So we got to be in other businesses that play yeah, in that that's space. Smart. That's smart. Yeah. Well, what about... Um, so the idea that this is going to become an ecosystem over the next couple of years, so developers will get into this like they did in the in the mobile space uh, and build applications, um, and you guys enable that, right? Sure. So yeah, we our platform essentially is built so that anyone can create the type of experiences that, that we create. Yeah. Um, you know, for multi-screen, you know, uh, device applications across smart TVs and mobile devices. So that's part of our strategy. Another part is um, you know products built on top of that. Um, of course, original titles and things yeah. like that. So, and then, uh, so I mean, you guys have only been around a year, just a, a, right. around a year. It's not only. It's congratulations on surviving a year, which is which is a thank uh, you very much a threshold, especially in the space. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> you guys are out raising money right now. Yeah. So our, our whole plan was to put out our platform and our technology, kind of prove that experience, yeah. have a few um, example applications, and and since those have been so successful. And then we officially launched the platform about um, about a month and a half ago. We thought this is the time. This is the time to go out and say, let's raise some money. Let's take it to the next level. So we think there's a lot of players here, both in the terms of you know the, the cable providers, the TV manufacturers. There's game pub publishers. Um, there's uh, you know public spaces, public venues, things like that. So we think see is advertising all the way around. So th I think we, there is something there, and we think it's now it's a time to take it to the next level, so that we can actually ride with the increase in popularity of smart TVs over the next year. So what, what was it about the space that kind of attracted you into this? Was it just like, this is a natural thing? I see that there's audio and video in your background, but is it, is it, is this, was this just a, you looked at it and said, what's next? Like, so this mobile thing, now it's going yeah. to be the battle for the TV? Yeah, absolutely. When we started the company, um, my, my uh, co-founder and I, we actually had, had worked for other companies and built those and sold those. Um, and we're kind of both at a point where we're ready to do something new. So it was really great opportunity to sit back and say, okay, you know, let's let's see what's coming up in two years. You know, let's mm -hmm. let's look at what's happening two years from now. Um, and we looked at the smart TV side of things, and we immediately saw the need for both smart TVs and mobiles. So we think in 2013, 2014, that it'll be commonplace. So it's time now to jump in. So it was really exciting because obviously it's just really cool. You know, it's a lot of fun too. Of course so, it and is. That's, at, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? You're changing the living room. You're changing the way that the living room <laughs> operates. You know, the, the yeah. American living room is it w will be forever changed. And and uh, and now, what about uh, what about protecting? So, uh, sorry about the investment side. I, I want to come back to that sure. for a second. So, with this enthusiasm that you have, mm -hmm. and that kind of, you know. I think it's an obvious assumption that something's going to happen in the TV space when it comes to interactivity. And whether it's a catalyst company like Apple that comes in and shows people how to do it or right. uh, the other manufacturers get it right, um, what has been the response from the, from the investment community? Is, it, uh, do you, is this a hard sell, a soft sell? No, it's definitely a hard sell. I mean, the thing is, this is a brand new space and no one's proven that it right. can actually make any money yet, right? So 
space. We all know that uh, you know all the projections say that it's going to be making money over the next two years, and things are going to happen. So what you're doing is trying to sell on the idea that you know let's be in the right position at the right time and offer the best technology so that when it does happen, we're ready to go. But I mean, you're not going to have you know 20 other companies that are making billions of dollars off of you know smart TV apps. You can't find them right now, right? So so yes, it has definitely been a hard sell to investors for that for that reason. But um, I think every time we've talked to somebody, they totally they all they agree it. that this is something that's going to happen, and somebody's going to be a player in this. Yeah. It's just whether or not they want to put money into something that uh, you know it has a has a little ramp you know a ramp up um, period into it. Yeah, you're building the industry, which is always tough to be one of the first in like this because I mean you have to. It's a proving ground at the same time is that it's a, a patience play as well, right? It's not going to sure. happen a, a year from now. And I've seen some stupid investments, right? Like $50 million oh, yeah. into software apps like Flip, Flipboard or, I mean, even Rovio. I don't get how they're going to spend $50 million in, in this. But um, And some of the, you know, non-business uh, type of uh, companies getting a lot of money. And it's just sure. basically a feature of somebody else's uh, application. Um, so it, it always, I always wonder, uh, you know, out there in the investment community, what they're thinking about when they put $2 million into this crappy little app. And uh, what they're staring at is is quite literally the future of this industry and a game changer where they're supposed to be putting their money into it. And and uh, most well, it's all about it's all about hedging the bets with the with the um, overnight sensation, yeah. right? So yeah. you know, and, you know, with Rovio, Angry Birds. I mean, there's a million other apps that are out there like that and before them, right? But I mean, the, they were cute. They were people got onto it, and then it just took off like wild, you know. And uh, you know, with that whole fifty million dollar investment side of things, I mean, going into movies and merchandising yeah. and all these other kind of things. So that's a quick hit, I believe. You know, um, so you know, expensive hit because there hasn't been expensive. another Angry Birds. Like you know, name another company that's name another yeah, yeah. application like yeah. that. It's a I corner can't. case, right? Yeah, that's right. And everybody wants to hopefully find that next one. Right. So I mean, I think there's you know, in the investment community, they're always looking for that type of thing. They're looking for that. Um, Huge amount of scale for consumers, like like a Facebook style or yeah. a Twitter style, um, and then there, there's plenty of them who do invest in technology, and um, knowing that it's going to take a while to to ramp up. So yeah. that's kind of where we're looking at, at that as well. And I think for the smart TV to take off, it's going to need an Angry Birds. It's going to need that one big hit, right? Um, so it's going to be both from the technology side, making it easy, making it you know approachable, but it's also going to need that just runaway hit that makes it uh, really take off. It just you know shines a light on it, right? That's right. So, That's right. What, what about protecting this? This is a this is going to be a contested area. This is going to be a, a big challenge. Uh, you, you know, as you as you go through this, but you, you've also got to be looking at this, saying, okay, well, we got to wrap something around this, uh, our own sure. IP around this, so that we can be protected for a little while, anyways, as we go out there. You, you guys consider that as you as you go through this? No, no, no. Yeah, we we file for a patent, so okay. um, you know we're we're patenting right now yeah. on our on our platform. Um, you know, we definitely want to try to protect that as much as possible. At the same time, trying to be as open as possible, right. you know, that we where we can too. So it's a it's a it's a tricky slope, you know. But so you do that. You go out and you um, and you apply for a patent, so that you can control. Uh, it's you. It's in your hands about how, what you open, what you don't. Right. So is that? Sure. Uh, because uh, ultimately, I always say this. I mean, you go out and you build a patent uh, portfolio, but if you can't defend the patent portfolio, like that's right. Why, why do it, right? Uh, right. So you and sometimes, look- and sometimes, it's like in the case, do you really want to? Do you yeah. really want to kind of spend that time and effort and and piss people off and you know things like that? So I mean, it's really more about once we knew we were onto something, I and mean, it was just a natural thing to do, right? So um, you know, it may not be granted down the future, you know, but the idea is that if you get the patent pending, you're protected for you know a short amount of time, at least while you're you're building the the, yeah. the, the future vision. So do you ever worry that um, I mean? Because it's patent pending, it's open now. It's exposed. Uh, ultimately, um, if you don't get the patent, I mean, it's 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 isn't it uh, isn't it open to your competitors now? Absolutely, and you know, and our our platform may not be the one that wins at the end of the day. You know, we're really in into it for the long run, so yeah. we're willing to pivot in every way. And there's lots of people going doing bits and pieces of this, you know, um, that you could call competitors of ours as well. So I mean, yeah. and there's the people recognize this and they're going after it. So yeah. you know, it's up to. For a small company like us, it was the right thing to do to create the platform and try to patent it. But we also very open to pivoting where, where necessary. Yeah, so it's the best part about being small and nimble. As long as you can keep right. that mentality, right? Is that well, that didn't work. Okay, on to the next thing, right? So That's when right. Apple releases their TV, it's like okay, so now how do we embrace that kind of thing? Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, our vision is you know 
this connected living room with, with connecting people through through mobile devices. However we get there is how we get there. Yeah. And we're hoping that our platform will be used by a lot of people, but you know, if, it, if it's not, then we're happy to embrace others and continue on as well and come up with new ideas and products. Because at the end of the day, if we release a product to consumers, um, it, it really doesn't matter what the technology is behind it as long as, you know, obviously we want to be owning as much of that as possible. No but, kidding. So, Alan, I think we've, we, we've covered quite a bit um, in, in, this, uh, in this session. Um, is there anything that is there anything that I'm missing here? Is there anything that I haven't asked you um, that is, is so important to, to get out, or or have we hit on on all the right topics here? I think we've hit it on the the core topics. I mean, my my mantra simply is, you know, if this smart TV market is going to take off, it's going to have to be with mobile devices. You know, smart devices, smart tablets, uh, in in conjunction with them. So, you know, that's the only thing I'd like to to leave that on the table for you. Uh, I, I mean, I, I agree. It's uh, we carry with these things with us. They're important to us already. Uh, putting a remote control on it is just not not great. Uh, so create right. a good experience on that that interacts with the television set, and and uh, and, and it's going to open up the possibilities, as you said. People's eyes light up as soon as they uh, as soon as they start using this. Absolutely. Well, listen, Alan, I, I really appreciate uh, you coming on and uh, and sharing it. Uh, you know, this is a fascinating space uh, because uh, I don't think that many people will think about this. Uh, the television in the same way going forward, and I think that uh, it's companies like yours that are at that cusp. Um, that uh, that what I hope in two or three years, um, you know, uh, Movil is one of these companies that has uh, has evolved into a, a market leader in this, and that's what I know. That's what you guys hope, obviously. Well, no, most definitely, most definitely, yeah. And thanks for having me on. It was great. I enjoyed well, it. So uh, people can find you at just Movil M O V L dot com. Is there another site that's you want right. to drive them to as well? Um, our platform is at connect.mobile.com. Okay. And then uh, from all from those places, you can get links to our applications and everything else as well. So. Okay. So movl.com. It's mobile, not movil. Mobile. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's connect.mobile.com for the platform stuff. And there's That's some right. great examples. You know, there's demos of uh, of uh, playing the games that they've created. So go and take a look at that. Uh, it's worthwhile. It'll it'll just It'll open your mind to the way the television, interactive television, should be. So uh, very cool. And yeah. you can find uh, a couple of our apps on Samsung TVs as well as uh, Google TV and the Google Google TV Spotlight. Wicked! I love it. I can't wait to see this. So I got to promise that Alan, I'll, uh, I'm going to have you back on um, sure. as you as you go through this process because I'd love to be able to see how this evolves over the next uh, number of uh, quarters and years as as we go through this. So as long as I'm around, I'm going to have an open spot for you to come on and, and let us know how things are going. Sounds great. Love to do it. Well, I've been speaking with Alan Queen, who's the uh, CTO of uh, of Mobile. Go to mobile.com, M-O-V-L.com, or connect.mobile.com for more information. Uh, Alan, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of this. Folks who are watching, listening, wherever you may be, you know I appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have any feedback, any comments about this, any questions, suggestions, if you want to reach out to Alan, uh, reach out to me at untethergmail.com. Uh, and I will uh, respond and, and put you in touch with him. But go to mobile.com uh, for more information. Thank you guys for watching. Alan, thank you for being a part of this. We'll see you next time on Untether.tv. Thank you, Rob.